Dalton's atomic theory. Now, basically, uh, first let's understand Dalton was a scientist who propounded a theory, something which is called atomic theory. Okay, first let's understand what this atomic theory means. This atomic theory meant that you know all the matter that we have. Okay, let's say if this is the matter which is there, this is made of very small, very very small tiny particles called atoms. Okay, this theory that any matter whatsoever it might be is formed of very small invisible particles okay when I say invisible particle invisible basically means that you can't view it with the naked eye right or maybe even some of the regular microscopes and all this theory is known as the atomic theory a theory which relates to atoms okay and this theory was put in by Dalton in 1808 eight it's almost more than 200 years now okay and there were various uh, what do you say uh, reasons or various assumptions or various conclusions actually not the reasons or assumption it's actually various conclusions which were there which formed a part of this theory the first one is that all matter is formed of small invisible particles called atoms then there were some of the things about atoms which formed part of this theory. The first one was that these atoms cannot be divided. So what this meant was that, okay, these are small atoms, but let's say if this is atom, okay, you cannot divide this atom into further parts, even let's say something like this. Now, to some extent, this theory has been overruled, you know, because under certain circumstances, later on it has been proved that you can actually divide an atom into protons, electrons, and neutrons. Now, what these three are, maybe we'll discuss it in a separate video. But an atom itself is actually made of these three, protons, neutrons, and electrons. So one of the drawbacks of this theory is that an atom cannot be divided, which was later on proved to be wrong. It's not that every atom can be divided, okay, but yes, the atom comprises of these three things. The second thing was that these atoms cannot be destroyed, and neither can they be created. Now, Stepping back a little bit, something which we actually spoke in uh, our previous videos as well, we talk, spoke about law of conservation of mass. Okay, for those of you who haven't gone through that video, let me explain what this means. This basically meant that, you know, whenever you put in two elements under a chemical combination, the total mass of the product which is formed as a result of this chemical reaction or combination is the same as the total mass of the product. This theory of Dal Dalton that you know these can neither be destroyed nor can they be created was used to explain this law. So he said that because the atom cannot does not get destroyed okay so whatever is the mass of one atom when it reacts with the other whatever product is formed the total mass remains the same. The third property or third uh, key kind of conclusion which Dalton draws was that if you take atom of one particular thing, so let's say if you take an atom of oxygen, okay, basically if you compare three or maybe whatever number of atoms may be of oxygen itself, these are going to be identical. So he said that atoms of one particular element are exactly the same or they are identical again later on it has been proven that in some cases the weight of atom let's say atom 1 can be different from atom 2 even though both of them might belong to oxygen so that was one of the shortcomings of this particular theory which was there right the fourth thing is that atoms of two things so let's say if we talk about hydrogen and oxygen if you have 
atom of hydrogen and atom of oxygen then these two will be different I mean they may be different in shape they may be different in size they may be different in chemical properties or all of them but these are different was that you know whenever you have any given compound okay in that the number of atoms of various elements which is there okay or the kind of atoms which are there so the number plus the kind of atoms which are used to form a particular compound is always the same so let's say for example if we are looking at ammonia okay whatever is the number and kind of atoms that you require for hydrogen and nitrogen would always be the same it's not that if you manufacture something in India the number of this thing or this thing required is more or less it is uniform across the globe and the last thing was that you know uh, it's not necessary so let's say for example if you have hydrogen okay maybe you can use two atoms of hydrogen to form a particular compound let's say compound X and you can use three atoms of hydrogen to form a compound Y right so basically let's say for example what this means is that a different number of atoms of a particular thing may be used to form different compounds so with two hydrogen atoms you can form different compound with three you can form different compound with that we come to an end of this video thank you for being with us today